No, nah, it was. Uh, I went to Mallorca actually this summer as well. Uh-huh. So just always friends. Mallorca and holiday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been anywhere else uh, in the world? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not really. No. <laughs> Coming up on the official Celtic FC podcast, we find out more about first team midfielder Odin Thiago Home as he takes part in our special game of first and last. All the eggs, the milk, Everton's fell out, and she's just putting SOS into the chat. And we're also joined by women's team midfielder Maria McInerney. This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Yes, everyone, we have Odin Thiago home on the official Celtic FC podcast. Odin, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, yeah. I'm very, very good. Yeah, very excited for this. We're going to play a little game of first and last. But first of all, how are you settling in to life at Celtic? Are you enjoying yourself at the moment? Yes, I am. Uh, it's been a really nice start. Oh, it's yeah. been perfect. Perfect. That's great. Well, we're going to put you under the test a little bit here. We've seen a couple of your skills in the football park. Let's see what you've got away from it at the moment. So how this works is you'll get the gist of it very, very quickly. We're going to do your first and last. So first of all, very simple. Who was your first ever footballing hero when you were younger? Uh, Messi. Messi, okay. Quite a self-explanatory one, that. Tell us just a little bit about Messi and what, what he means to you. Any memories? Uh, I grew up as a Barca fan, same as my dad. Uh, he went to watch uh, Formula One and he brought back a Messi shirt. I think I was probably like six years old. And since then, I've, I've always been a Barca fan and a Messi fan, yeah. Is that framed pride of place in your bedroom? Uh, no, but I still have it, yeah. yeah. It's very small. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, not Thiago? I thought that might have been your answer there. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Messi is like my favourite player, uh, but I love to, to watch Thiago, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, and last footballing hero, so who's a player you probably look at now and you enjoy watching the most, or is there maybe a player that plays at the same position of you that you always have an eye on? You know, it's still Messi, but, you know, uh, Thiago is... He's more like me, my style of player. Uh, so, you know, I love watching him and and I try to and to learn a lot from, from the way he plays. So what was it about Thiago that really just gripped you to love him so much, but then also to change your name? He looks, you know, just so comfortable on the ball. Uh, always have so good time, knows uh, what he's going to do seconds before he gets the ball you know so he's just uncomfortable comfortable so technical and um you know it's so it's he's brilliant you know mm-hmm. class brilliant um so let's take it back as well and first football memory as a fan does anything come to mind uh as a fan because you're a barcelona fan did you have a local team as well yeah we have a uh, rosmurg in my hometown i know celtic have I've uh, played them a couple of times, beat them every time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you know, I, I am a Jusma fan. I went to a lot of the games, watch them play. So, probably, yeah, I think so, going to the stadium. Did you ever go to the games against Celtic? Uh, I think once, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Celtic won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and have you got a, a memory maybe more recently as a fan? Have you, have you been to any games recently that you've just been as a supporter? Is that... Standing in the, the terraces? Uh, you know, in season you don't have a lot of time to travel and see see other teams. But I went one to, once to Barcelona to watch them play against Espanyol. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that a good memory? Yeah, it's a really good memory. Uh, Messi scored twice. Oh, and that's... Then, yeah, yeah. A free you're happy then. You can, you yeah. can go home a happy man <laughs> after that. Um, right, a couple of non-football ones. Um, can you remember, take us to... What was the first holiday you went to outside of Norway? It's the first foreign destination. We went every summer since I was a kid. So we often go to Mallorca. Okay. Yeah, me and my family to Alicante. And um, so, you know, we, we go every summer to like Spain often. And uh, every winter we go skiing in the Alps. Okay, so you're a pretty nifty handy skier yeah yeah but i don't know if i'm allowed to hear but <laughs> <laughs> well, i was going to say though because we've got some good mountains in scotland yeah. in the winter time for skiing so you might want to look them out if you're allowed yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah. To ask the medical to team. Ask. <laughs> um what was the last holiday you went on um that was this christmas to 
No, nah, it was. Uh, I went to Mallorca actually this summer as well. Okay. So just always friends. Mallorca and holiday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been anywhere else in the world? Uh, <laughs> not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you were to go on holiday again, would it be Mallorca? You think? Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you know somewhere and you like it, then just keep yeah, going. Yeah, um, right. So this one is a, a music question. Who was the first artist that you remember, or band you remember listening to, or getting into as a child? Hmm. Artist. It's, uh, Probably a Norwegian one, I think. So it's not something we'd know. Nah, no. No. What What type so. of music are you into? I just listen to you know the top, top uh, you know lists on okay. Spotify, a pop. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. What have you made of your music since coming into Celtic? <laughs> it's okay. It's yeah. okay. But uh, it's not like the in Norway we listen to a lot of Norwegian songs. Here is more like you know English and international Spanish a bit. So, but you know, I enjoy. Is there anybody that's played some music in the changing room that you can name and you've thought that's terrible <laughs> uh, we, it was someone who played uh, before the game in I think it was against Osaka I don't know, I don't know who it was but it was terrible was it, was it some Japanese music or is it something nah, nah, no it was not Japanese but it was terrible <laughs> um, right so kind of back to sport but slightly different what's the first sport if you could pick another sport to play other than football what would it be if you can be a professional at? Skiing. Skiing? Yeah. Not like, you know, uh, like down mountains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, I, I go every every winter to the Alps. So. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And is it a sport that you would just refuse to play? You would never want to? Maybe something you've done before and you're like, nah. I know chess is regarded as a... It's a sport now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you know, that's funny. We were having a debate in that in the office the other day about whether chess is a sport. Yeah. What do you think? I think no. Okay. I think officially it's, it's a sport. <laughs> and probably golf as well. I know a lot of people and players here and they play That golf. is a touchy subject if yeah. you're saying that. In... Yeah, maybe I can't say that. But <laughs> I... <laughs> we can delete that back. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've tried once. So you don't think golf? Nah, nah. I tried once, but I was so, I was so bad. So probably yeah. I think if you're good at it, it's yeah, probably I'm sure a few guys here might take you out and yeah. I heard you have like top golf in Glasgow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's near also. Celtic Park, yeah. so you could always maybe after a game yeah. jump over there. <laughs> but no, I, I'd have to agree with you in the in the chess front as well. That was what we were saying. Actually, this is another one completely similar to this. Would you say Formula One is a sport? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Okay, because that, that's another big office debate that we have all the time. Ah, okay. And Just it's... because, you know, the risk and I've seen the, um, the series on Netflix. Yeah. And so much effort and training they do, like, off the track. So, yeah, I think yeah, yeah I think it's a sport, yeah. Right, you're going to make... You've made me happy with that because I like Formula 1, but you've made someone in the office ah, okay. very angry. <laughs> so, I'll need to show them this when we get back. Um, just a couple more. Um, what was your, what was the first time? Do you remember the first time you were stopped in the street in Glasgow? By a Celtic fan. Um, my first day here, some of the players went out to eat, and then we was yeah, the, some fans came to our table mm -hmm. and wanted to take pictures. So. How do you find that side of things? I, I think it's uh, it's nice, you know. It's uh, I think you should people give so much of themselves you know to to the players and so much support so you should give something back as well so mm -hmm. so i enjoy it and like yesterday as well people came up to me as for pictures and i try my best to to always give some of my time you know because for me maybe it's only five seconds but they gonna remember that moment and have that signature or picture for for a long time have you had any funny altercations with fans yet <laughs> uh, no no not, not yet no. i'm sure it'll come <laughs> um and finally just to round off on um it's not really a first or last but considering you're still fairly new to the club what is it you want to achieve at celtic when when you look back in your time at the club but take it here to to win lots of medals and just to continue the success yeah you know i've never won something in my life like in football we, we always came like middle of the table so uh, I came here to to be part of a, a winning team you know I want to to win medals and trophies and that's what you do in Celtic. Brilliant Odin well thank you so much for joining us hopefully 
it's a very successful season for the team and for yourself personally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good man. Thank you. Maria McInerney, thank you very much for coming in and joining us for a game of first and last. People don't actually really know, but this is the second attempt. Yeah, this is the second. This. Um, <laughs> the last time we tried it, we had issues with the lights they yep. kept going on and off <laughs> and then you had to scram yep so fingers crossed we've just about got there with i this know one. let's hope so <laughs> if not then we're just gonna leave yeah, after we're just this. Gonna we're just gonna it. have to put it in lots of different parts <laughs> so you're probably one of the only ones that kind of know what we're going to be doing here because you've answered a few of these questions <laughs> yeah. already so it means you've had a couple of days actually yeah. to think about your answers true that is true yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so let's uh, let's kick it Let's kick it off again um, with a nice easy one to begin with. Your first footballing hero when you grew up. So I'd probably say Henrik Larsson was definitely one of the ones looking up when I was younger. Um, I remember my dad telling me stories about him all the, all the time, about the 6-2 game and when he chipped the keeper. Um, so I think it was 6-2 here. Um, but I would also say as well, like Kieran Tierney was a big one for me. Left-footed player like myself up through the academy um, and he was he was a big game player for us you know like when he was injured and stuff like we struggled so um, yeah KT was up there as well mm -hmm. and the last thing you were here I had the same joke with you uh -huh. about Chloe Craig and yeah. uh, Caitlin uh, Hayes um, sorry not Caitlin Hayes but Chloe Craig and Kelly Clark because they're two people that also come through the academy like Kian yeah. Tierney did but from the women's side of thing so um, are they two people that you looked up to when you were of course you know like um, always know who uh, Craigie and Kelly was. So when I joined Celtic, you know it was always you'd see like marketing and stuff about the first team, and like you'd see them training or playing, and you'd be like, like I want to be, I want to be there one day. And lucky enough now, I'm I share a changing room with them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's definitely they were definitely people I'd looked up to. So who's your most recent footballing hero? Then who's the one person that you watch at the moment and think? that's who I look up to or that's who I model my game on, who would it be? Yeah, like, as I said, the last time we were filming it, um, <laughs> I'm having the same conversation. Know, exactly. <laughs> um, Kevin De Bruyne's definitely one of the ones, like, you look up to now, the you know, Man City are unbelievable, like, no one can get near them right now, so, um, like, just winning the treble there, um, like, that was amazing for them and, you know, just the way he how he composed he is and just the passes he finds and you know like he's, he's, he's got a good strike on him like scores goals he assists so yeah I think Kevin De Bruyne yeah. is up there do you think he gets into like the all time Premier League 11 in the, in the uh, that is a good question I'm not sure you know there's from what I can remember there's obviously a bit uh, more players that I, I, I couldn't tell you and yeah. I, I never watched um, but like he's he has to be up there like the like what he's done for Man City as well like how many leagues they must have won now with him or how many cups so and he is he's a he's a big game player like you can always rely on him yeah. for big games and turning up so yeah he's a good player yeah I think it's going for me because I mean it's always the whole thing about like schools Gerard Lampard and you've got like Roy Keane yeah. Vieira and stuff but I don't think there's anybody that's as good yep. on the ball as the Bruyne. Oh, so for me, he just makes it look so easy. It does, doesn't it? So just... easy. So, so easy. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's admiring. Yeah. Uh, let's move on a bit. Now, I can't actually remember, I don't, can't remember if I've changed up a few of these just to okay. give you some Okay, I think this is ones. where we got to the last thing. I can't yeah, remember any yeah. other questions. Lights are still working. Yeah. <laughs> so um, right. First time you thought you could have a career in football? I would probably say, um, when I was younger, um, I used to do like football camps up at K Park, and David was actually there, um, and he seen me like because there was a Celtic camp on as well, like one of the soccer academy ones, and he seen me, and he was like, he, one of the guys who worked at K Park at the time, like knew David very well, and he was like, you need to get this girl and train me, and I remember training with the first team the women's team when I was about nine or something like that. I was wow. doing, I'd done a training session with him. Uh -huh. It was when Cara McBearty was there and I remember Cara was coming back from injury and I was doing running and stuff with her at the side and involved in wee games and stuff. Like, I might not be nine, maybe a wee bit older, maybe like 11 or something. And like being there, I was like, oh, like, 
like this is what I want to do, like I want to be a footballer and then a few years later like David said like you're always welcome to come back here and um, like that was it when I was 14 I, like I'd left my boys team and within two days like David had already for my dad, the club, uh, like my boys team and been like, like let's get Maria in so I think it was the way that Celtic acted like how much they showed that they wanted me here um, made me like have a bit of belief like okay like maybe I could be a footballer one day that's so, amazing what was the last time then when you thought I'm going to forget about everything else and it is only football only. because when you're growing up as much as everyone wants to be a footballer there must have been other things you might have been interested yeah. in or you might not have thought football was going to be it so what was the last time you thought about that it was just like I think the build up of after Covid like I was the one that was training with the first team out of everyone on my team, like, consistently, like, like, Fran gave me my debut when I was 16, and it was like, they they showed that they believed in me, and then they gave me, um, like, the apprenticeship contract, they sent me out on loan, and were like, we want you to get better for a year, like, go and get better, and then go get experience, and it was just like, it was a good feeling, like, knowing that, like, they, they trust you, and they want to have you here, so... I think it was just, it was like that and just having the belief from people outside of like mum and dad tell me, you can do it, you just need to, it's just the work you need to put in and like, don't, don't get me wrong, it comes with a lot of sacrifice, like the amount of times I've had to say no to going out with my friends or family parties, family events, like, because you just can't, like, you have to have the mentality of being like, it's just football, like, you have to forget about everything, it's like a bubble and you just forget about everything like I always say like football's not like a nine-to-five job it's 24-7 like you need to constantly be thinking about football um so I think it's when like there was a wee switch and it's like that's your mentality you need to have and that was that was it I'd say. Were you thinking at that time about anything else did you have any other considerations with jobs with universities or anything? I think you know school like I stayed and done my hires in school but it was always like this wasn't for me like I enjoyed school don't get me wrong it was <laughs> it's a good laugh but um like I just felt like something was missing and I loved football like it was it was my dream to be a footballer so just the full aspect of like I could make it happen like I was ready just to give everything to to do that how were you at school I was good at school yeah. I generally yeah I was good at school what um, was your what was your best subject I'd probably say P and history. Okay. I was really good at them too. Um, what do you remember from history? What were you doing? Uh, so it was like in that five, that was like the slave trade and yeah. like the ra- was that the racism in um, America as well, or that might uh-huh. have been higher. And then oh, what was higher about like the the Russians and all all of that, like but. So if if. Time in football comes to an end. Do you think yeah, you maybe history? like my uncle's actually a history teacher. Oh, right, um, okay. Yeah, so potential. He's always the one that said to me like, "Do history, do history." <laughs> but um, I think if fo- something was to have to happen with football, I'd still have to stay in football. I couldn't. I don't know if I could deal uh, with. What would be like? So if you take examples of school, what was the subject that you didn't enjoy the most? What would be like the last thing you'd want to do if you, your career were to? <laughs> To come to like, an end. when I remember like first and second year, we were doing home ec and stuff like that. Like I just you not like home ec. It was just, it was just, honestly, hundred percent honest. It was just a complete like let's just rip it out the teacher. <laughs> it is, isn't honestly, it? They probably everybody's home ec like that, isn't oh, it? Oh, I think the teacher aged like but two years every period. So they had my class. It was terrible, but it was just a laugh. Honestly, it was uh, honestly. If I think of school, some of the top memories comes. For my home at, home at class. I think everybody's the same. Cause I can speak for myself, but our school and our class was exactly the same because you would you would just like oh take them you in. would take it like a big time oh hundred percent. I remember going in. He's got this this guy. He's just just lost it and he was like throwing tomatoes at the board <laughs> and you're just like what is going on? And then this guy in my class, whatever we we're making. He started grating butter instead of cheese, and she's just lost it. The home ec teacher is absolutely lost. Get out of my class! And she, all he was doing was picked up the butter. He started grating it. Just things that when they like be there moments and just yeah. the full class were. Oh, it was so hilarious. What I get from that is that 
I never really want you to cook for anybody no. in this football club. <laughs> <On> nah, <laughs> tea in general, I'm actually alright in cooking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't mind a bit of cooking. Um, What's your go-to? Probably like a pasta, mm-hmm. um, like a prawn pasta or like nice. a chicken pasta. Okay. Um, oh, okay, actually, I'm yeah. swaying to that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm No, I generally, like, I'm, I, I'm actually quite good at cooking. Like, my mum goes to Gusto's and stuff, so uh-huh. um, I make some of them, but... Yeah. Uh, well, sticking on the theme of food, kind of getting back to this first and last, um, what would be the first meal that you would have on, like, a cheat day? Oh, the on first a cheat day? Go-to? I like a Nando's. Mm-hmm. I like a Nando's. Nando's is definitely one I would go to. I think Nando's are everything. Like, not Chinese, a pizza... Um, definitely just go to Nando's because you still get like chicken and uh, you can it's not, like, it's not bad for yeah, you, is yeah it? it's not depends what you get but oh, yeah. you, you can rip it don't get me wrong there's times where I'm like right I'll show the full menu here <laughs> uh, but I think definitely Nando's what's your go to order because everybody's got one yeah so probably I'd say the wrap oh I'm the same cheese in it yeah double chicken uh, wrap with cheese for me oh double chicken I know I just get single um, spicy rice and um, if I've not get football, if it's a cheat there, I'll get the chips, chips the yeah, perry chips. It's got to be the perry chips. Yeah, and what's but what's spice? Hot. I like, and I like a wee halloumi sticks. Ooh, that's a, a good. Ha- yeah, that's a good proper uh, strand. Yes, <laughs> actually, that is my cheat, my cheat meal. Um, and obviously a Pyrenees. I have to, I have to get a Pyrenees on yeah. the side. That's a good. That's a good order. I'm, I'm all for that. That's right up yeah. my street. What would be the last thing you would want to eat on a? Cheat day or any day, what's the one thing food? I wouldn't go like, um, like a chippy. Like that would be like the least thing I would mm. ever, yeah. like, uh, if I ever have a chippy or that, like you need that. I need to be in the mood for that. Like it's like a one off. Yeah. Like you need to write off the rest of your week as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> you like can't have any. No, I know that's it. Week. That's it. Um, nah, I couldn't even tell you the last time I had a chippy. Um, yeah. and I feel like I would only get one if it was like. You were going to like the beach, it was a sunny day, and you go to like a nice fish that and chips. That feels different. Yeah, that yeah. feels different. Not like I just a chippy in the street. We were ex- it's so funny you said that. We were having this exact same conversation about an hour ago in the office. Talk- I don't know how we got onto it, talking about chippies and going through that whole thing. And it's the same thing. If you're going to like a nice place, it uh-huh. has to be fish and chips. Oh, yeah, 100%. But if you're just getting a place like the bottom of your street yeah. or something, then. Yeah, getting. What would you go for? Oh, I couldn't even tell you. Nah. Like that's that. I'd honestly like. I would never. It would never even cross my mind to go to a chippy. Like unless it's generally you're going to the beach, like a because you always get good ones down in yeah. the beach that are like good fish and chip shops. Yeah, and you feel a wee bit healthier. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I. No, after bit, it. <laughs> a wee bit healthier than a pizza crunch or, or something. Pizza crunch, yeah. Um, right. So you're stuck in a desert island. Uh huh. Who is the first player? And the squad that you would want with you? Ah, good question. I think it will be between Caitlin and Amy G. I think Caitlin, because she is get sense. Um, I know she would look after me. Um, uh, like I think she would know what to do. She wouldn't get pure stressed. Mm. And Amy G, just because she's get good patter. Like me and a- me and Amy get on so. I'd say one of them too. Yeah, like, you need a good mix of both. Yeah. Someone that's going to look after you. Someone yep, that's and then I'd laugh. probably say like Rach as well. But I don't know if I'd trust Rachel, <laughs> honestly. Well then, flip that. Who would be the last player that you would want with you? Lou. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody is saying No Lou. chance. Absolutely. <laughs> Lou would get eaten by a shark if I was on a desert island. <laughs> uh, we've done two of these before. Um, and... Both people have said Lou. I'm hoping for a clean sheet <laughs> now, Lou. I feel on, sorry for her. No. No? No. She just, she sent something out the group chat on Sunday night. She doped the fridge and all the eggs, the milk, everything's fell out. And she's just putting SOS into the chat and all of us are like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. She's just, oh, Lou would just be the last person I would. <laughs> um, back to football. Can you remember the first goal you scored for? Celtic. I can remember the first one for the first team, yeah. but academy nah. What was the first team one? Um, it was against Dundee United. Um, I'd came on at half time. Um, I remember they were saying that you were. I was unlucky not to start that weekend, mm-hmm. and I came on and I like I think Amy G had a shot and it 
the keeper saved it or it refl- uh, someone hit off someone mm. and it just dropped to me and I took a touch and I just I just passed it in the net and I just remember the feeling it was oh, it was so good. I think my, my dad was more buzzing than I yeah, was. Yeah. But um, I, I, I couldn't tell you academy. Yeah. No. Are you like dining off that goal with your family for a good few weeks after that? Yeah, I was happy. I was I was buzzing. I was buzzing. But I think I, like, I went through a wee stage. Yeah, I think I scored in like three like that goal there was another goal the next game so it was like three and three and then i just kind of no squad no squad as many since uh last question then so it's not going to be like your last goal but for this season what would be your overall goal for this campaign obviously we won a cup last season. yeah what's the ambition this year I'd, i think we all want to win the league we know how close we came to the last season it was we were seconds away from doing it seconds um but we now know what like it can come down to it can co- come down to goals so we need to know now that like every game we, we just don't stop we go we score as many as we can we put ourselves in a good position um and we just win as many as many cups as we can and you know like the treble's not out of the window and that would i think that's 100 percent the goal um, but I know we all want the league, and to if we win the Scottish Cup three years in a row as well, like that would be huge. And then so. once that's done, celebrate with a full Nando's order. <sighs> I'll be having more than that. <laughs> I'll be having a chippy and Nando's. <laughs> I won't be at the Jockstein. <laughs> well, Maria, thank you so much for joining us. Ever since the lights, ever since yes, I know time. it has. So we don't need to do this again. Yeah. So thank you so much. No worries. Perfect. <laughs>